Hi YouTube, welcome to another video. Today I am going to talk about Throne of Liberty and what I like and dislike about the game after playing it for one month. Throne of Liberty was released almost one month ago. I did start playing it on the pre-release and I just decided it is time for me to sit down and share with you my thoughts about the game, what I do like and dislike about this MMORPG. Now, to give you a little bit of background about myself, I have been playing MMOs for the past 20 years. I have years and years in WoW, Black Desert, EVE Online, Elder Scrolls Online, New World, Lost Ark. I've played them all. I've played them all and I know what I want and don't want in an MMO. And I'm happy to share with you my opinion about it. Again, this is only my opinion, my personal, what I like, what I dislike. If you have a different view on what I'm about to share with you, let me know in the comments below. I to see what you guys think about the game so far, or if you haven't played the game yet, maybe this will help you out decide whether you want to play it or not. Let's start with the things that I do like about the game. The first thing that I can tell you, obviously, is the graphics and the aesthetics of the game. I do think that a game that you should play, you really should enjoy watching. And this is one of the most important things for me when I do play a game. I really want to have good aesthetics and good graphics. And I've been playing so many different MMOs right now. And although I am sometimes tempted to go back to an MMO that I really enjoyed because of the gameplay. But right now, when I see those bad graphics, it's like, um, nope, <laughs> no, 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 no. So graphics and aesthetics for me are good and I do think in this game these are very very decent. Now on Ultra I do play the 90% of the time I play on Ultra only on large scale PvP I do turn them down to like minimum settings. Uh, but in general the game looks pretty good. Um, there is a little bit of room for improvement and if I had to rate uh, uh, from 1 to 10 the overall graphics of the game I would put them 8, 8 and a half, something like this. So I do think it's decent and it's worth just playing the game only because of the beautiful side of the things. This is just itself. It is worth experiencing at least the, the, the you know, the gameplay, the walkthrough from 1 to 50. It is a free to play game, guys. You can just download it and try it out if you haven't. Another thing that I do like about the game is the combat system and slash. Oh, I was add a slash over here, which is combat slash class system in the game. So basically, if you don't know, in Throne of Liberty, you built your class by just deciding which weapons you want to go for. And in, in that sense, you create your class based on combination. So you can go, for example, SNS Wand, which is going to be SNS Sword and Shield, which is your tank class already pre. And then you add the Wand, which is the healing item to the class. And you build something like a paladin, something that is going to be a tank, but with very heavy self-sustain. Self At the same time, you can combine and, and go for a class, something like a bow staff, uh, which I'm playing, by the way, which is a ranged glass cannon uh, type of DPS type of class. And you can go so many different ways of, you know, approaching it. Now, I need to add over here that there is a meta and there is a non-meta. Meta is like a GS dagger. Um, then you have expo, expo dagger, staff dagger, bow dagger. Basically, everything with dagger is uh, is pretty OP right now, specifically for PvP reasons. Um, but there's also non-meta folks. Some 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 people you will see SNS staff. You will see uh, you know something not very on the on on the meta. So, uh, but people still enjoying the game and having a good time. I do like this about the game. I do like the fact that you you don't pre-pick like specific classes. Your class is what you play. It gives you a little bit this type of feeling, like a little bit like uh, Final Fantasy, if I believe it is. Um, what I do like also about uh, when we're talking about the classes and, and, and the game itself is in general the skills and how you, you pick the skills and you specialize them. You put talents on those skills. So basically you have a little bit more room to play around with what your actual build is by deciding what is going to be your active skills and what is going to be your passive skills. And there is a lot of room to play around, although there are not that many skills. Now, if you compare that with previous and other MMOs, you'll see either in some cases less skills or more skills. 
Um, I do believe that it is, although a tap targeting system, um, it is well balanced out that you don't, you're not overwhelmed for, with skills and you can decide which ones you want to really level up and invest in. Now, one of the things that I do like, and honestly, I think this is the one and only thing that actually kept me in this game engaged for the entire month is the mid to large scale PVP. I think that this is one of the things that makes most fun um, in this game. I, I really think that I think like, like the mid scale, the large scale PVP is what drives most of the people into actually enjoying this game. The reason why I'm saying this is because I believe the game in, in, in general is also a game that was meant to be enjoyed for folks that actually enjoy the large scale and mid scale PVP. Um, because you eventually gear up to do exactly this. You get your character, you get him to level 50, you start getting your gears, your items to become stronger, to become more damage, to, to do more damage, or to have more survivabilities, one or both, sometimes both. So you go towards this, but you go towards this in order to, you know, to manage a fight against either a specific group of people specific guild, a specific class, or something like this. So let's say I am bow staff, like I am in this case right now. I, my job is to do a lot of damage to the folks um, from far away. I shouldn't even think about my survivability because I am a glass cannon. I die super quickly. Yes, it is important for me to have certain types of evasions, the magic evasion and ranged evasion would do me a favor if I'm getting hit from other ranged classes. But my focus and priority should be the amount of hit points that I have hit in terms of hitting the enemy and and also like critical hit chance, dexterity and stuff like this. So you, you, you build your character towards a specific scenario and approach or it, like it's been mentioned before in other videos rock paper scissors it's like um you build your character towards one of the things but eventually it's about pvp eventually it's about this large scale fight that you're about to have and where are you positioned in this so i do like this i do like this approach <clears throat> however now let's talk about the downside about these things is that we're a little bit neglecting the pve side of things although we we are building and building our characters towards pvp we are getting towards this with pve so like we do co-op dungeons we do open world uh dungeons we do just like the majority of the content that you're doing th throughout the day before you actually go and do the dynamic PvP events or do the Rift Stones and Boom Stones and all this other stuff is through PvE. And this is where I think where the game lacks a little bit of variety and um, a little bit just, the, it, it, it just lacks a little bit of more uh, PvE focused uh, things. First of all, people are not focusing enough PvE gear in general. And I, I feel like there is no reason behind it because there's not a real tough challenge in terms of dungeons anymore. Co-op dungeons were difficult the first two days until people figured out mechanics. Nobody is interested in gearing specifically towards running those dungeons instead of eight minutes, five minutes. Nobody cares about that. Everybody is focused on PvE, PvP stuff, right? So the PvE stuff, not many people dedicatedly gear towards that. Uh, and there is no real challenge, if I can say so. So I am lacking a little bit of more variety in dungeons. I'm lacking um, raids, if you will. I would love to have a bigger party of 10, 20, 15 people to do a raid, not a world boss. I'm talking about a raid uh, with multiple mechanics and stuff like this with good, with good, you know, rewards in there. Um, so I would love to see a little bit more of this. I really hope it's coming. One more thing that I can tell you guys that I really uh, love about this, about this game. And this is something that is going to be a little bit different for most of you folks. And it's the guilt. It has been an MMO that uh, straight up uh, got me involved into being part of a guild. I met my guild super randomly. It was literally one of the guilds that just popped up in the guild finder when I just started the game. Like literally the first 15-20 minutes. 
I picked that guild, I jumped on Discord, and after that, we got to meet each other, we got to talk each to each other every single day. We made new friends. Um, you get to know new people, you all are fighting for the same uh, you know, cause, you're looking to become a more bigger, stronger guild, to compete with other guilds. So if you get to enjoy of meeting a new community, a new guild, try to make this happen. I really encourage you to do it because this is also going to give you an additional motivation to drive and to actually uh, play this game a little bit more. Um, I do believe that this is one of the cool sides of this game. However, I also have to give you that this is one of the things that might give you, um, you know, you're not going to get any satisfaction from the game if you don't experience this. That's what I'm trying to say. The reason why I'm telling you this is because out of the one month um, from out of the one month of me playing this game, I was one week guiltless. The reason why I was guiltless is because I wanted we wanted we were growing so fi fast that I wanted to go and separate and make a second guild so that we can put that into an alliance and even grow bigger. But the point was, I was, I was empty for a week. Uh, we didn't grow the second guild as, as anticipated, and I didn't see so many people coming in. They were a little bit skeptical into joining a guild that is just was made as a second guild. Eh. So, you know, I, was, I wasn't playing really like I was playing the week before I decided to leave our main guild to make a second one. So what made me realize, this action made me realize that actually being part of a guild that actually pushes you a little bit to show up 8 p.m. for a dedicated, I don't know, raid or PvP event or whatever, is actually really good, and it gives you an additional motivation to actually play the game and enjoy it. You get to talk to other people, Obviously, you'll get yourself involved into some guild drama that happens everywhere. But the point is, it is an MMO. And as an MMO, we're, it is better to enjoy it in a guild. So my advice here is, if you want to play the game, really try to look for in a guild that you will fit well. If you're in a dead guild that has zero chat messages, that you guys don't hang out in Discord, then just... Change that. Change that and you love the game. Trust me. I, I like this is this is like what will drive you and will keep you going. Now, it is it, 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 those are a few of the things that I do like about the game. I want to also sit down and talk a little bit about the things that I do not like about the game. Uh, one of the things is slow progression. I do think that um, it takes a little bit of time to progress, uh, to level up your skills. If you're unfortunate enough to reroll or decided to go for another weapon, that means that you also need to go and level up new skills, invest more time into that. It will take some time. So I do think that the progression, I think in general, is a little bit low. This also get, get, gets me to the point uh, where I need to talk a little bit about the pay to win. So in my opinion, there is uh, like three groups of people that are playing this game right now. Group number one is the people that are kind of free to play, but also jobless, either people in school, college, or they just don't have any occupation. They, they just, just play the game 24-7. There, trust me, there are folks like this. Those people don't invest much money in it, almost none, but they're also pretty geared up because they do play 20 hours a day and they you know do everything. And then there is... The, there is the free-to-play players and there is the pay-to-win players, the whales, the people that work a nine-to-five, that have a couple of businesses, they run, you know, businesses, make money, but they also want to play the game and be strong. Well, guess what? Cha-ching, they pay their way into Endgame. How do they do that? Well, they just buy the latest gear, trade it, fool it, max it, bump it, you know, the drill. You know, they, they swipe for a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars for them. That's pocket money and they're fully geared. They don't bother. They don't play, but they, they own you in PvP. Well, the, 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 there will be these folks as well. And my issue with this is my issue is not with, well, first of all, some of the people, some the, the people that are free to play and no life and a, you know, touch some grass, you just don't play that much. And the people that swipe too much don't swipe that much. <laughs> my point is. 
it is difficult to be the person that is in the middle. It is difficult to be somebody that don't have enough time to play, but also don't want to spend enough money in it to be able to be on top of your item power and be super strong and, you know, viable. So it is difficult for the super casual players, in my opinion. Um, does it mean that you can uh, that you can enjoy the game still regardless? Yes, you can. You, you can enjoy the game regardless of where you play a lot or swipe a lot. You can absolutely can. Will you really experience the game as it is in the end game with the large scale PvP stuff going on, with the conquering of zones, rift stones, and all those things? Most likely not. But there is an option for you to still play the game because it's a free to play game and you still get to experience. Another thing that I'm lacking personally is since I since we are incentivized to do in Europe and go towards PvP, I would love to see more PvP modes and I would love to see a battleground. I would love to see randomized battlegrounds where you group up like it is in WoW, for example. Uh, you have like 10 players, battlegrounds, 15 players. You have at least two or three dedicated healers in your team and you just just do battlegrounds. I would love to see this as a mode uh, that would, which would give you some kind of a mid-scale, mid-scale accessible at all times PvP, which is amazing. I think that's lacking. So if I had to say like two things that are lacking that I wish that were in the game right now, battlegrounds and raids. Those two things would be awesome, would give us a little bit more things to do. Um, and yeah, so overall, I think that if I could summarize my overall opinion about the game, I think like uh, Throne and Liberty is off for a very great start. It is a game that will require some of your time to for you to be, you know, up there, up to date with your gear and you want to be, you know, competitive and be among the bigger guilds. But you can absolutely also play the game on a casual way, uh, casual basis with your friends, a little bit have fun. If you're more into the PvE side of things and you really don't care about the PvP side of things, you can absolutely just forget about everything I just said and just straight up go and enjoy, enjoy yourselves with, with, with the PvE aspect of the game. It is lacking a little bit of you know, PvE stuff to do in the game because it becomes at some point really repetitive. You're doing the same dungeon every day. You're doing the same open world dungeon every day and stuff like that. It will get repetitive at some point, but I'm sure they will cook more content. They'll release more stuff. And we are about to see, um, you know, a good, good future ahead of us. I compressed a lot of the things that I think about Throne and Liberty in just 15 to 20 minutes right now. Trust me, I did a few takes and I, my, my, you know, my opinion about the game was way longer than this. It took me 30 to 40 minutes before that. But I really think that it is difficult to squeeze in all the things that you want to say about the game in just a very short video. It's really difficult. I do think the game is amazing. It, it has great potential. I'm definitely going to play the game uh, moving forward a little bit more um, and exploring a little bit more if I like it or die to play it more, yes or no. Anyways, I will be playing the game. I hope you find this video interesting. If you do, make sure you hit that like button. And if you find something useful or would like to see more, if you would like to see more of my videos in the future, you can also subscribe and I'll see you soon. Good luck with your jobs.